I'm an engineer and I got into skydiving as a way to keep sane through graduate school. <laughs> and I've been doing that ever since. I, I've got 2,200 jumps. I've been on 15 world records. I fly, I've built four airplanes. Uh, one of them I set the transcontinental round trip speed record with. Uh, and part of that was the thrill of having, matter of fact, I turned it into a project. And I talked about it in class, at my project management class at the time, about this is a project, it has a scope, it has a schedule, it has a budget. See if you can set this, this record. So I, I, I kept the class involved in how I progressed on this project and kept them involved when I actually set the record. Uh, I was in contact via uh, satellite linkage with uh, Dr. Connolly at the time. And uh, so he knew and my wife knew, everybody could follow me on my flight across from here to Florida and back on that flight. When I started employment, I had a number of projects that you start working on, small and large. Uh, within a few years, I started becoming a project manager. And I found that that uh, was actually critical in one's career path, because uh, the project is kind of the building block for a company. If you can do projects well, typically you can run your company fairly well. Well, leadership is important. You know, you're, you're essentially the de facto leader of the group, uh, which is interesting because many times you have no hiring or firing capability. So you inherit the group, and yet you still got to motivate them to reach the goal, which is project completion. So you have to employ a number of different leadership uh, techniques in order to, to get the group to get to the vision, to influence them to get there. But there's a number of characteristics that a leader has to possess. Textbooks, I, I think, are a good starting point, but you shouldn't rely on a textbook. What I found was way more valuable was to ask yourself, who have you known that are good leaders, and who have you known that are bad leaders? And, and try and emulate the good leader and don't do what the bad leader did. You know, one of the things you walk away with is, in leadership is, you know, I can study and, and learn these things and get better at it if I pay attention and fold those lessons in. Uh, they're, they're traits like you know, having a sense of urgency, priority setting, treating your staff well. There's probably about eight or nine key characteristics of a leader you probably have a sense of when you're young, but you can certainly look back and learn from your life experience and get better at it as you go. It's interesting, I, there are many times where I'll stop myself in lecture and I go, man, I wish I had this lecture when I was a student. You know, because those were lessons I learned the hard way, you know, over years. And to be able to condense it down into, you know, 10 lectures and present it, I think, wow, this is great. He's always pushing me to join the Launchpad program. He, and he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to join the Launchpad program. He was just getting by. You know, I was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll try it. Yeah, why not? And I just thought, if you could really figure out how do you get more inventory in at a lower cost, then how do you sell it at a more profitable moment? This is a really good profitable business model. Roughly around